Hello, this is Roman. My name is Sam, and today I'll be doing uh, another video for you guys. Um, now, today, this is a video that was much requested, um, and it is a PC kind of buying guide, or what do you need in a PC? Um, so, I guess I will kind of explain what this video is going to be about. It's going to be about um, buying PCs, since I understand that it can be very hard to know what you need in a PC. That is why I'm here to help you guys. So I'm going to show you guys three um, pre-built PCs, and then I'm also going to show you guys the parts that you might want for different tasks if you're thinking of building your own in, like, uh, like if you're physically going to build your own. All right, so um, uh, as I as you could probably hear, I got a new mic. Um, this is actually, I might do uh, kind of a tutorial on how to cheaply record your audio really well. Um, now, actually, I'm pretty happy with this mic right now, and um, hopefully you guys are too, so yeah. And if we could reach five likes for this video, that'd be much appreciated, um, as always, um, trying to get these videos out there, since I know a lot of people would like to know this information. So let's get right started with my first PC that I'm going to show you guys, and that's the Aspire AXC100UR31 by Acer. Um, so a lot of you are probably looking at this PC for $338. Um, this is probably the cheapest PC I could find, and this is just going to be used as an example. Um, so this is about equivalent to probably a lot of your um, typical office PCs. So this is a, basically an office PC. Now if you're going to be buying from Acer, um, Acer it makes office PCs. They don't really make gaming PCs, so don't think about buying from Acer if you're thinking of gaming. Now, this PC will run Minecraft, but it will not run it very well. As you can see, it's got 4 gigabytes of RAM, which is fine for gaming. I mean, you ideally want 8, but 4 will work. Um, so, processor manufacturer is an AMD E-Series E1-1500, so it's an AMD processor, which means it's not as good as an Intel processor. Um, it's a dual core, core, which is very dated. Right now we're in quad cores. Um, 1.48 gigahertz, which is about a quarter of the power of an uh, Intel i7, which is actually pretty insane. 64-bit um, processing, so it is a 64-bit machine, which is at least pretty good. 500 gigabytes of storage, which is enough for the average gamer if you're not making any videos. Um, let's see what else we got here. So we got a DVD drive, which is pretty obvious. Um, one external bay, which, I mean, this is if you want to add more stuff. I don't know. I'm not really going to go into that. Um, HDMI, so it is an HDMI port. It has an HDMI port, so you can uh, go in 1920 by 1080 if you want to, or 1080p. Um, Windows 8 operating system. Windows 8 is not necessary, in my opinion, if you're doing videos. Uh, no, sorry, not videos. If you're making, if you're playing games, uh, Windows 8 is not really necessary. I'd say Windows 7 is a lot better, much, uh, I guess, steadier operating system. And, I mean, that's just the size. It's a tiny little PC, as you can see. Um, so if you are thinking of just buying a PC because um, you don't have one yet, I mean, this is a good start. Like, if you're buying your grandparents a PC and they don't have one, I mean, this thing, this thing's great. It does what you need. It surfs the web. It watches YouTube videos. And, um, I mean, it won't do very well with any game, in that, for that matter. I mean, it will play Minecraft and Flash games. Not at full render distance, but it will do okay. Um, I mean, this could be a good choice if you're just 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 getting into PC gaming. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Um, actually here, I missed a mid-range PC, so I will be right back with that. Okay, so I found another uh, PC here. This is about um, a little bit more expensive than the last one I showed you. This one's $580. Um, it's from BestBuy.com. Um, I couldn't find this actually on the Toshiba website, so I had to come over here to Best Buy and go find it. Um, this is pretty similar to the old um, laptop I had, except it's a little bit less uh, powerful because mine actually had a video card inside it. This one doesn't. So um, basically, um, this one just has a little bit more speed, a little bit more like graphics capability. So it has a uh, six gigabytes of RAM instead of the four that the Aspire X had. It has um, it's expendable to sixteen gigabytes, so you can get sixteen gigabytes of RAM if you want. Um, it has DDR three RAM, which is some of the best RAM that you can get. Um, all right, so we got uh, SATA 5400 RPM, doesn't really matter. Uh, 750 gigabytes of uh, computer hard drive space, which is pretty significant. It's pretty good. 750 gigs for a, a laptop, that is. All right, and then for graphics, we have built-in, let's see if I can find that for you guys. Um, graphics is mobile Intel HD, which means it's still integrated graphics, which means that the graphics won't be very good, but it should be able to run Minecraft at about far or even very far graph um, render distance. I don't even know uh, with these new laptops. Uh, the Intel uh, integrated graphics are getting a lot better than they used to be. So I don't know. Um, I wouldn't suggest recording yet with the with this uh, computer. This computer probably can't record very well because you'd probably use up all your processors since it is only, I'm pretty sure it's an i3. Let me check. Uh, no, it's an i5. Okay, so yeah, recording would be possible with this computer, but it would lag your game. So just a warning.
All right, let's go on to the next PC. So we have the Alienware X51. Um, this is a very popular model. I see a lot of people wanting to buy this computer, and I can see why. It's a pretty good deal. So it's $700 um, right off the bat. And yep, so let's scroll down. Let me see what we got here. So we got six gigabytes of memory, so same thing from the last computer. Um, what else? One terabyte of SATA, so one terabyte of hard drive. Um, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 645, which is a pretty okay card. I had a 630 before that used to be able to run Minecraft at full render distance, 60 FPS all the time. So 645 is a little bit stronger than that, and it's pretty good. Um, it's got one gigabyte of cache memory or uh, RAM on the card, so it's pretty good. Um, the 645 is a pretty mid-range, I guess. It's kind of mid-range, I'd say. Um, slot loading dual layer DVD burner. Okay, so it's got a DVD drive. Um, let's see what else it's got here. Um, it's wireless, so you can use Wi-Fi. If you're building your own computer, you need a special chip for Wi-Fi, but um, I'll explain that later. Um, what else? Does it have Intel i7? I think it might have Intel i7. I need to check where the... I These sites are like the worst thing ever, by the way. Um, it, oof, it only has an i3. Ooh, I didn't actually miss that when I first was going through all this. Okay, so there's three Intel cores right now. There's the i3, the i5, and the i7. So if you're gonna buy an i3, you gotta ask yourself because it is a much weaker than it is much weaker than the i5. You see, it's 3.4 gigahertz. The i5 is uh, 4.2, if I remember correctly. So those gigahertz are actually gonna be helpful because usually what I uh, what I run the hardest is my processor and not my video card or my uh, RAM. So you gotta remember that. Um, six gigabytes of RAM is going to be plenty for running Minecraft or even some higher graphics games. Shouldn't take that much more RAM, but you're you're going to run your processor hard if you're only having if you only have an i3 there. So do keep that in mind. You might want to upgrade that later because it is pretty easy to upgrade your processor. Well, no, it's one of the harder parts. I'm lying actually. So um, remember that when you are building your PC that you want to at least have i5 if you are trying to either record or play games on higher graphics. But yep, so this very nice PC, very nice cheap $700 PC, nice. All right. Finally, I'm gonna show you guys the um, top, no the highest notch PC. I'm gonna show you guys because if you're going any higher than that, I don't know why you're watching this tutorial. Honestly, um, if you're going any higher than this price range that I'm about to show you, um, you shouldn't really need this tutorial because you probably know a lot about PCs already. So finally, this is um, the highest of the Alienware uh, that Alienware has, or the Alienware Auroras. Um, so there's three models. They've got the Alienware Aurora for 1300. 1600 and 1900 so um, they are currently on sale right now so if you want to go pick one up i'd suggest doing it now because it's a pretty significant sale if i remember correctly yeah it's uh yeah you save uh, 291 dollars here 241 here and 130 here so if you're going to pick one up be a good time to do it now because then you could probably get if you buy it here you could probably get a solid state drive for that and it comes with one wow all right let me go through the three pcs so oh sorry i had, I had to burp there all right so the first Alienware Aurora is a $1,400 PC. Uh, comes with with oh God, this this site's the worst thing ever. Like who who designed this? Like look, like it goes right in front of the stats. Like thanks, yeah, that's what I wanted. No, that's not what I wanted. All right, um, damn. All right, this site is oh my God, this site's bad. Okay, no, are you gonna let me? Or are you gonna let me? Yes. Okay. So we got the Intel Core i7 Extreme Processor, so that's an i7. Now, i5 and i7 have very slight differences. i7 has interlacing, which means that it's going to be a lot easier to process video, or render videos, should I say, render videos, animations, and stuff. It's just going to be a lot easier generally. Okay, and then it's got Windows 7, which is perfectly fine in my opinion. You don't need Windows 8. Um, 8 gigabytes of memory, which is going to be a ton if you're record if you're um, making videos or uh, playing games, and a two terabyte hard drive, which is also going to be a ton because two terabytes is a lot. Um, it's at fourteen hundred dollars, as I've already said. Let's scroll down here to where the shows the graphics options. So here we got an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760 with 1.5 gigabytes of GDDR5. Okay, so I've got a 760, but mine has three gigabytes of RAM, which, I mean, it's not that big of a difference, but no big deal. So um, the GTX 760 is a great card. It really, it can play any game uh, full graphics while recording at 60 FPS. So it's a great card, um, really good. The 760 is closer to a 670, so it's more like a 670 than a 660. So keep that in mind when you're buying it. It is a pretty powerful card. It's pretty, It's a, it's been performing great for me. All right, so we got a two terabyte serial ATA uh, three drive, which is uh, two terabytes. That's fine. Um, let's keep scrolling here. Single drive uh, DVD. All right. We don't need to know anything about that. And I think, I think that's all we care about. I don't know. Yep, that's all we care about. All right. Now the next one is for sixteen hundred dollars. So you're getting an i7 again, Windows 7, 16 gigabytes of memory instead of uh, eight. So you're getting a little bit more memory, but 
not really a big deal since eight will do fine. Uh, three terabyte hard drive again. The three terabyte hard drive is not completely necessary in my opinion because it is um, it's not like two terabyte will do fine if you're just playing games. Um, and here, if you buy it now, you get a Call of Duty Ghost copy for the PC. So pretty cool. All right, let's keep scrolling. So um, you get an Intel Core i7. I've already said that. All right, let's go down to the um, dual layer. Oh, here you get a Blu-ray burner with this one. So again, I don't know if it's worth the extra $300 to get this model instead of this one, but I probably won't suggest it because it's got the same card. It's still got the same, um, it's got a sound card, which is pretty cool, but no, it has, let's see, um, GeForce GTX 760 with 1.5, uh, uh, gigabytes. So again, it's the exact same card as the last one. So I don't really think this one's worth it. I think you should stick to this one. If you're thinking of getting a high-end gaming PC that will last you maybe two or three years, the Alienware Aurora for $1,400 is, I think, a great pick. But if you're thinking of spending $2,000 on a PC, the Aurora, uh, this one is a beast. Let's just put it that way. So it's got uh, three gigabytes of memory plus a 256 gigabyte solid-state drive. So what a solid-state drive is, it's a faster drive with no moving parts. So as you know, a hard drive has moving parts, but the solid-state does not. So the solid state, um, usually you'd put your operating system on it. That's what I did with my computer. You put your operating system and then you boot in like three seconds. So it just makes your boot time a lot slow, uh, a lot faster. So you usually don't put anything else on there unless you want a game that boots really fast. You just put it on there. So 256 gigs, not that much, but it's good for your operating system. 16 gigs of rem uh, memory, blah, blah, blah. We've already been through all that. So it's the same stats except the big change is the um, dual NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760. So Basically, you get two 760s with this, um, which uh, I don't know if it's really worth it. Um, like, you're not really going to find a game where you were going to need two 760s to run. Like, Crisis 3, yeah, okay, you'd need both two 760s, but not everybody's going to be playing Crisis 3 on full graphics. I mean, let's be honest, it's not really a game that you want to run on full graphics, even if you have a se two 760s, because, like, the game is amazing. Um, you are going to run it on full graphics, I mean, if you have both 760s. But, again, you don't really need both 760s, in my opinion, because with one, like, I mean, you can run basically everything. So, I'm going to stop repeating myself. Um, I don't think this is really worth it, per se. Like, you should just, instead of buying this for $2,000, you should build your own and put, like, a Titan inside it. Because for $2,000, mm, you probably couldn't afford a Titan. So, like, a 780. You could do a 780 for this price. So, which, so two 760s, I don't know if it's really worth it. I don't know if anybody really needs that. So yeah, I think this is really only the only change, except that you get a solid state drive. So the solid state drive is kind of worth it. All right, so um, I recommend this computer the best, the Aurora $1,400 computer. It's a great model, really good computer, um, really good desktop. If you're looking for a desktop and you're willing to spend $1,400, this is an excellent PC. It's got everything you would ever need to play any games and record with. It's a great recording PC as well. All right, so now I'm going to be giving you guys a few tips for building your own PC, what you need, what you don't need, and um, just how to pick stuff in general. So I will be right back when I go and get some a few things. Okay, so finally the last segment of this video is going to be just a few tips for you guys for if you're trying to make your own PC. Now, I've got two cases here that I picked out. So I've got the Antec 300 Black Steel ATX Mid Tower Computer Case, and I've got the... Um, thermal tack, uh, thermal take, thermal take. I don't know, thermal take. I, oh, thermal take. That's how you say it. All right, I'm I'm stupid. Thermal take Chaser series, Chaser MK1 Mark One. Should I say blast black SECC ATX full tower computer case. So you can get a mid tower or a full tower. Now the mid tower is a little bit smaller. I've got a mid tower here. Um, and let me tell you, when you're building the computer, it's pretty tight, and your cables are going to get pretty messed up. So you might not want to stick with the uh, the full tower. Now you're going to say you save like what? You save a hundred bucks if you buy the mid tower. But I'm going to tell you now, just the like you get lighting on this one. It looks a lot nicer. I mean, for one, if it looks like a beast. But um, if you're building your computer, you need a lot of space. So this, I'd say, is going to give you a lot more space than this. I mean, look, so we got 18 by 18.3 by 8 by 10, and this one has, let's see, um, 22 by 9.3 by 22. So it's a huge case, and that's what you really need as much space as possible. So even if you're building not so powerful of a PC, I'd suggest getting the full tower because it's, it's a lot more space. All right, now, um, if you're not overclocking your uh, Intel uh, processor, I wouldn't say you need a cooler. So this is a... Here, this is a fan cooler, um, the Cooler Master Mega Flow 
basically a varying turn and silent fan. So yeah, I wouldn't suggest, I wouldn't say you need another fan. Like I've got just the stock fan and the Intel fan that comes with the core. I wouldn't suggest you need one. Um, really, you don't need an extra fan unless you're overclocking. If you're overclocking, yes, get the other fan because or else you're just going to bust your processor. So I would suggest getting this if you are overclocking only. Don't get it if you're not. Next, we got um, for the graphics card. So we got the 660. I've picked out a few here. The 660, the 760, the 780, and the Titan. So the 660 is your basic gaming uh, card. A lot of people have this card, and it's it works fine. It's great. It runs everything on max graphics, and it's good. The 760 is a little bit more powerful. Um, it does have a little bit more RAM as well, so it is overall just better. It's only $50 more than the 660. So if you're getting a 660, you may as well just pay the extra $50 to get the 760. Then the 780 is, I think, a $500 card now. It might have been might have gone down a little bit, but it's an expensive card. But it is the highest on the market if you don't count the Titan, because the Titan is a beast. But this is um, the GTX 780. It's a really good card. It can run everything max graphics, no problems. It's just a really, like, really, like, the best card you can get right now. It's $500, so if you're willing to spend this much money on a card, go for it. I mean, it's going to run everything really nicely. And finally, we got the Titan. Now, the Titan is, I think, around $800, and it's an excellent card. Like, it's an unbelievable card. And if you're going to run a Titan, I mean, once again, I mean, you may as well go for a 780. Like, I mean, the Titan is, it's good, but it's not, I don't think it justifies the extra $300. But once again, I'm not an expert on the Titans or the 780s. I've just got I've just tried a 760 and a 660, and I know the difference between those two. And I know that you should probably go for the 760 instead of the 660 because they're not that big of a price difference. All right, finally, I'm gonna show you guys the Intel Core. So we got the i7 and the i5. Now, there's not really a big difference between i5 and i7. Now, you don't want to go i3 because there is a difference between i3 and i5. Now. That's the thing. So i5, the only difference between the two is that the i5 doesn't have interlacing, which the i7 does. Now, if you're going to make videos, i7 is for you. If you're not making videos, i5. Simple as that. Just, And if you're editing pictures or anything, i7. If you're not, i5. So if you're just going to play games, i5 is perfe perfect. Um, if you're going to play games, or no, if you're going to record and photo edit and stuff, i7. Oh, I forgot one more thing. All right, I'm going to say this just uh, without any f visual aids. I'm going to say... Okay, RAM. Now, this is something that a lot of people worry about. Now, I got 16 gigs of RAM, and that is a ton. Um, if you want to get RAM, I would suggest getting 8 gigs, unless you're running a server off your desktop. If you're running a server off it, get the 16, because you're going to need it. You're going to need it to run everybody on the server at once. So, I would say 16 gigs if you're running a server, 8 gigs if you're not. 8 gigs will be a ton if, you're ever, if you ever need anything for uh, gaming. Alright, so yeah. So, that's my PC guide. Um, I think I might have, yeah, well, okay, how much hard drive space do you need? Um, one terabyte is fine, two terabytes is ideal, and three terabytes is a bit much, so that's just the easy guide. If you're making videos, the more the better, so if you can get two, two is great for making videos anyways, but three could be perfect for making videos, because you got a lot of space. So yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. As always, if you could leave a like and subscribe, that'd be much appreciated. If you guys want have any more suggestions for videos I can make in the future, like if when the new consoles come out, I'll do kind of a console review, see which one is better than the other. I won't be buying any of the new consoles, but I'll be giving my professional advice, or my semi-professional advice, I guess you could say. So yeah, so thanks for watching.